What I'm starting off here with is an equilateral triangle, meaning all three angles are equal and all three sides are equal. Now let's go backwards to our geometry class. In geometry, I'm going to drop an altitude. And let's call this A, B, C, D. So step one, I dropped an altitude. And I'm not doing a formal proof about this. Altitude. If I drop an altitude, I have a right angle. Well, if I have a right angle, and this is equal to itself, can I say the two triangles are equal? Two triangles are congruent cause of eye length theorem. And the two triangles are equal. If triangle one happens to be equal to triangle two, can I say this angle and this angle are each 30 degrees? The answer is yes, because corresponding parts of common triangles are common. Can I also say that this piece is equal to this piece? Again, if the two triangles are equal, corresponding parts of common triangles are common. Now let's look at this fascinating thing even closer. Let's go through that again. 60, 60, and if I drop this down in altitude, this is 30, and this is 90. So if this is 6, and this is 6, and this is 6, each one of these are 3. Again, I'm a great believer in overkilling it. My students will say that all the time. Okay, let's say this is 30, this is 30, and this is 10. Well, if this is 10 with a right angle, then this is 5, and this is 5. Don't forget, this is 60 and 60. Well, let's do it again. One more time. This is 60 and 60, and I drop my altitude again, and I have a right angle, and I know the two triangles are equal. This is 30, and this is 30, but this time around I'm going to call this x. And that's x, and this is x. So, how big is each one of these pieces? Half x. Let's look at what we just did. If I look at just this one piece as a right triangle, forget about anything else, just look at the right triangle. What we can say, and let's look at what we, what we can actually say. What we can say, we can now say the side opposite the 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse. Okay, so now we have a rule. The side opposite the 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse. Let's continue now to understanding if if there is a rule about the side opposite the 60 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is go back to all three of my examples that I did earlier, and let's look at what I have here. I have here this example. It's a right triangle. Can I say, and here's another right triangle. Can I say right here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared? which means 3 squared plus b squared equals 6 squared. In this case, 5 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. 
We're going to look at the two of them first, and then I'll come to the third one, the generic one. If I work this out, 9 plus b squared is equal to 36. Subtract 9 on both sides. b squared equals 27. b equals square root of 27, which happens to be square root of 9 times square root of 3, which is 3 square root of 3. Let's do this one. 25 plus b squared equals 100. b squared equals 75. So b will equal square root of 75, which happens to be square root of 25 times 5. Square root of 3, which is 5 square root of 3. Let's look at this for a second. The hypotenuse was 10, this is 5. The hypotenuse was 6, this is 3 times square. Both of them have square root of 3. Let's continue. Let's go backwards to that other case, the initial case, right here. That we're going to look for a generic rule. Maybe there's a rule in there that we can figure out and work from there. Let's look at what I have. Can I say one half x squared plus, in this case, b squared, and technically I can call it h for height, but since students are so used to seeing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I will continue to use b squared equals x squared. So let's look at what I have here. One fourth x squared plus, I, I meant to say a squared, oh, no, I'll leave it because I wrote x. 1 b squared is equal to x squared. If I subtract 1 fourth x squared on both sides, let's look at what I'm left with b squared is equal to 3 fourth x squared. If that's the case, I will take the square root of both sides of the equation. And even though you already know how to do this, I'm going to break it up. Square root of 3, square root of x squared, over square root of 4. So b is equal to square root of 3, x over 2. And I'm going to just rewrite it. x over 2, square root of 3. And look what I have, lo and behold. Half hypotenuse times square root of 3, all over again. Well. Basically, now that you understand the rule, let's look at what happens. 30, 60, 90. If this is 18, side opposite 30 is what? Half the hypotenuse, 9. Side opposite 60, half the hypotenuse, times the square root of 3. 9 square root of 3. Yes, it's a rule but it's more important to understand it before just following the rule. Thank you and good luck.